Let's read. <laughs> The Black and White Rainbow, written by John Trent, illustrated by Judy Love, read by Uncle Jordan, Aunt Ashley, Peyton, Logan, and Ella. To know you're on the right page, listen for this sound. Then you'll know to turn the page. Chapter One, How It Happened. Mooseberry thought it was just about the most perfect summer's day he'd ever seen, the kind of day picnics were made for and kites and kids longed for. Warm yellow sunlight filled the forest, showering sparkles on the leaves of the trees. Flowers were bursting with reds and yellows and splashes of blue. The grass seemed like an ocean of green waves tossing in the warm breeze. Yet even on such a delightful day, not everything was perfect in the forest. In fact... In the last month, six of Mooseberry's friends had disappeared. Twelve sock-footed ferrets had been seen sneaking around the forest, and they were suspected of having captured the mice. There were rumors that the Cupa misguided ferrets had carried the captured mice away to the forest hideout of an unusually large and unpleasant mole named Monty. So now, Mooseberry had started roaming the forest to protect his fellow mice, although he was small. Without a doubt, Mooseberry was one of the bravest mice in the forest. His nose and ears were always on alert, and every time he spotted a hiding ferret, Mooseberry warned the other mice by blowing a large, shiny whistle. The shrill, ear-splitting sound made the ferrets cover their little ears and run away. As the beautiful summer's day came to an end, Mooseberry continued his forest patrol under a golden sunset sky, making sure all the mice were safe and snug in their homes. Yet even that brave mouse and his whistle couldn't chase away the darkness that was coming. For that very night, sometime between lay me down prayers and first morning light, something terrible happened. The very next morning, every mouse in every mouse house or mouse apartment awoke to a world without a single bit of color. Just imagine a world where every teddy bear's fur in bl is black or white or gray, but never brown. Where every doll wears a gown as pale as ash or as dark as midnight but never blue or yellow or pink. Where a favorite bicycle that was once shiny green is now a dreary gray, and where the red check tablecloth in the kitchen looks like a black and white checkerboard. With, if it had been Christmas, which thankfully it wasn't, all the lights on all the Christmas trees would have twinkled black and white. The whole world had lost its color, even Terror of Terrors. Saturday morning cartoons were in black and white. Who could imagine something so terrible? The animals forest stayed salt and pepper color day after day with sad eyes and sinking spirits all the mice miss the blue waters of their river the orange sunrises and the pink sunsets the songs of their good friends the red-breasted robins who were now too sad to sing because they had become the black-breasted robins instead everyone quickly grew tired of gooey gray peanut butter strawberry jam that looked like sticky tar white lemonade and popsicles that looked the same no matter what flavor but the day it rained, the forest animals discovered something much, much worse. After large gray raindrops fell all morning, the dark clouds finally pulled away in the late afternoon. Just like always, a huge rainbow appeared, almost close enough to touch. Only this rainbow wasn't a beautiful rainbow like the last one you've seen. This was a black and white rainbow. At this tragic sight, the mice stood below the rainbow and wept. Who took away all our colors? They cried. We want the old rainbow. We want back our beautiful world. With his sensitive heart, Mooseberry missed the rainbow's beautiful colors even more than everyone else. Perhaps that's why, as he walked home that afternoon with his head hanging low, he wasn't thinking of whistles or ferrets until it was too late. From behind the trees near Mooseberry's house, twelve ferrets fell upon him. Although he was bravely resisted, both Mooseberry and his whistle were soon tied up and carried off, just like his friends before him. The ferrets carried him through the forest to the mole's black backwood hideout. Nearby stood something that caused Mooseberry's heart to skip a beat and made his fur stand on end. It was a giant slingshot, as big as a house. Well, said Monty, who was calmly eating his lunch, if it isn't mouse missile number seven. What do you mean? asked Mooseberry as the ferret strapped him into the stretchy part of the giant slingshot. Where do you think you and your friends went? chuckled the mole, who was talking with his mouth full of food. 
You and your whistle have caused me enough trouble. You are about to take a trip so fast and so far that you'll never find your way back to this forest. Wait, shouted Mooseberry as the ferrets pulled back the slingshot. Tell me first, was it you? Are you the one who stole all the color from our world? Wiping his mouth with a huge napkin, the mole smiled his smirkiest smile. I see you're not only a brave mouse, but a smart one as well. Yes, I stole it all. I absolutely hate light and bright colors. They hurt my eyes. I'm tired of staying inside this dark and damp hole all the time. How now I can come out all day long, whenever I want, and I can be king of the forest just as I always wanted. He snarled at Mooseberry, and that's why I need you out of the way, just as I got rid of your friends. Monty quickly commanded the fa um, ferrets. Ready? Wait, shouted Mooseberry. Aim? No! Mooseberry cried. Please, don't! Fire! With a snap and a zing, Mooseberry was hurled high into the sky. As he flew over the black and white rainbow, he saw the mice down below, still weeping. Quickly, he called out, It was Monty the Mole! Monty stole all the colors! But that's all you could say. In the time it takes you to blink your eyes, you might try it. A blink right now, just to see how fast that is. Mooseberry and all his friends and all the forest disappeared from his sight. Farther and farther he soared until he was over the open sea. Mooseberry wanted to stay brave, but he shut his eyes tight as he fell over the cold gray waters. Suddenly, instead of landing with a cold splash, Mooseberry thought it into something softer than your pillow. He had flown right into the sail of a mighty ship, and now he was sliding safely and down until he dropped gently into the deck. Filled with joy at this surprise rescue, Mooseberry gave a loud cheer, a cheer that ended almost as soon as it started. Someone or something was standing over him with a sword. It was a tall, proud creature and as full of color as a rainbow. <gasps> color! Mooseberry was seeing so much color, it nearly blinded him. He squinted his eyes and watched in amazement as the tall creature touched his sword to his cap and said, I'm Captain Chameleon, and I'm glad you're finally here. And so are we, Mooseberry heard several voices say. Rushing across the deck to greet him were his friends, the six mouse missiles, that had been launched before him. There were hogs and handshakes all around, but Mooseberry stood in a daze, too astounded to talk. He turned to Captain Chameleon with eyes that begged for an explanation. With a smile, the captain, the captain grabbed Mooseberry's shoulders and said, The ruler of all, the great king across the sea, has sent me to rescue you and your friends from drowning. Then he lowered his voice to a whisper, And now we've no time to lose. We're sailing back to where you mouse missiles came from, and you, Mooseberry, will lead your friends in bringing back the color to our world. Me, Mooseberry said. But how? <laughs>